Well, uh, Dandy is uh, was a, not only a good football player, but he's a terrific uh, basketball player for me and on our freshman team, and did great things at Clemson. They won a lot of games. And uh, how you doing, Danny? Good. Well, if you keep telling that by that every year, they're gonna believe I played for long. <laughs> I don't know if you could play today, Danny. You're probably too physical. They they but they call a foul now if you're breathing on a guy. So you probably. Oh God, I know. You, it. I, basketball's got to be. I don't know if you can't run, up, go up down that court in a hurry. Hey, Danny, what about, know, what about this game? I bet Joel Leaves is turning over in his grave, eh? No doubt. Yeah, that's the truth. What about this game on Monday? Uh, Clem- talk a little bit about Clemson's side. I know they lost a lot of defensive players from last year, mm-hmm. but they seem to be, uh, you know, doing a good job. Vernable's doing a good job with them. They got, they got really, they got really not lucky, but they really got good on uh, on one recruit out of. Uh, defensive lineman freshman came in and played just a tremendous player. They had a really good defensive tackle the year before, so they got two real strong down linemen. And they, the defensive coordinator's done a really a good job. Secondary's a little bit better than they thought it'd be, so they lost two from the ball game for the team last year. But uh, they're playing pretty good defense, not bad at all. And uh, offensively, you know, as long as Watson plays good, they uh, they are, they're going to be hard to handle. Yeah, uh, we're talking with Coach Danny Ford, uh, Coach. As you uh, look at this Alabama offense, you know they got a running quarterback who's not thrown the ball very well. They got running backs that uh, they kind of do it by committee. Uh, they do have some very very talented receivers, but. They had a hard time getting them the football. How do you see that matchup with a with a running quarterback going against that Clemson defense? Well, I went to the Peach Bowl last week, and I was helping on the field just for a little while for the game. And Alabama's got a good looking squad. I mean, they're, they're a good looking bunch of people. But I also thought Washington was a little bit better looking kid than them, a little bit taller, wider. But uh, the problem that uh, Alabama's going to have, I think, and I don't know. I don't know anything that more than anybody else knows. But uh, they went into the Ohio State game did not thinking that Barrett could beat them throwing the ball, and uh, so they shut. They tried their best to shut down the run. I believe they got the same kind of ideas versus the quarterback at uh, Alabama. Yeah, I don't good point. believe they think that they, he can beat them throwing the ball. And I believe they're going to probably gang up and, and try to stop the running back. I will say that the Alabama running backs, as many times as I've seen them play on TV, now not in person, it's been a long time since I've seen an Alabama running back get knocked backwards. They just, they just very physical, lean forward, get their uh, pads down low, run behind their pads. Break a lot of tackles, so you know they. they it's going to be a good game. I, I think it's going to be very good. I don't know that Clemson's linebackers can can tackle the, the backs. I think that's what it's going to come down to: how Clemson linebackers play versus the offensive back. Now, if the, if the young man has a good game, and I don't think the quarterback at Alabama's played poorly all year, and, and you know he's kind of due for one. He, he didn't play great last week, but they didn't. Never did get the ball to number one last week, and he's an outstanding player. So, uh, you know, I think uh, I think it's going to be a little of a ball game. I know that Coach Saban was kind of embarrassed last year, even winning, and that uh, uh, Clemson was able to do what they did to, the, to their defense, even though they were only it was a five point ball game. Uh, but they, Alabama, I mean, Clemson scored with twelve seconds ago, so it could probably a twelve point game, really, if you go back and look at it. So. We're, we'll see what happens, uh, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a really a good game, I think. Uh, people up here thought Clemson outplayed Alabama last year, and Alabama got away with a win. And, and people down there, I know, think that uh, uh, they're going to be uh, Clemson, so uh, <laughs> it's going to be a good one. Uh, we're talking with Coach Danny Ford. Uh, Coach, talk about Dabo Sweeney, uh, what what he's done there at Clemson, and then his style is is totally different. Uh, the Nick Sabins, but you got to be who you are. But he instills mm-hmm. confidence. Uh, to, it looks like to me and his players, where they even play maybe even a little bit higher than their ability. 
uh, because he gives them so much confidence. Let's, let's talk about the job Dabo's done. Mm, oh, he's done a nice job, really nice job. Huh? Radio earlier this morning, they were talking about the, their record over the last four or five years. And they're just a step behind Alabama in the winning percentages and winning uh, 12 games every year and, and all this kind of thing. So uh, he's, he's done a nice job. He's got a good plan. He, uh, you know, he, he's I got a couple of coaches that play for me or, or coach for me that's on his staff. And, and uh, he's the most positive person. I I can't hardly stand all that positivity. <laughs> stuff he to. Neither can Dad. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm a high fifty guy, you know. Yeah, what I am too. Go wrong, going to go wrong, and we better prepare for what's going to happen and make something happen when something goes wrong. They don't ever believe nothing's going to go wrong, and 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 that's if you can do that, I guess that's a good trait. Uh, yeah, uh, it but, is. Uh, and he and he's done it, and his staff believes in that. And uh, but you cannot argue with with uh, either one of the coaches' success that they've had. I mean, they. Oh, probably the last three or four years they've been at the top of their game, and and I really do believe that both teams are are the best two teams in the con- country. So I know that people, uh, not only does Coach Sweeney do a good job on the field, he does a good job uh, with academics. He does a good job in the community. Uh, they got a, a, a foundation here that they've given a lot of money to uh, breast cancer, and so you know the people at Clemson are very happy with it. You know, Danny, the the atmosphere at Alabama is a lot like it was when you were there uh, around the football, around the coaches. Uh, you wanted to be sure where Coach Bryant was and what he was doing. If you were assistant mm-hmm. coach, and, and you and you were going to be anxious to see what the practice plan looked looked like when you went out. To, it, it's the same type of thing. I don't really compare their records, but uh, the atmosphere is a little bit different, and and you can you can talk to that a little bit for sure. Or you don't know exactly what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you know, they, uh, from what I understand uh, of what they do, they're very well organized and, and, and do a great job. But uh, uh, where, where he, and from what I hear, and I don't know, I, I, I spoke to their clinic one time, and he treated me extremely nice and very, very nice to me and invited me down there and everything else. But, uh, you know, he's going to do what he wants to do and how he wants to do it, and everybody else uh, better get in line. Kind of that you know, way when so. you were there. <laughs> well, it was kind of that way, but everybody, the difference back then, Coach Bryant had been in it so long that all the coaches had played for him, and they were just as scared of him as we were. Yes, I'm, that was my point in saying that. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, I mean, they every time he's run a play, it's, you look up on that tower, you make sure he wasn't coming down, especially if he had his boots on that day. <laughs> you wore him boots to practice about every other day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah. I think that, Coach, that was part of the problem with Lane Kiffin. He got that other job, and uh, he wasn't scared of Saban anymore because he had another job, so he kind of thought right. he, he was going to do it when he wanted to do it and how he wanted to do it. And I think Nick Saban uh, saw the game plan and kind of saw some things that maybe were distractions, and he – eliminated the distraction. What was your thoughts on that? Well, I don't believe that was a one-week deal. I mean, uh, that's probably had been coming about for a, for a while. Um, but I don't, again, I don't know that. That's just speculation on my part. Uh, but it did, I, I, it took a lot of guts or a lot of uh, <laughs> sure something did. to, if I was a head coach going in the national championship game, I don't know that I could do that. I don't know that I could rock the boat that hard. And uh, and so that's why I think it's a little bit more to it than, than the public knows. And, and uh, whatever it is, I'm sure it'll come out one day. But, uh, yeah, you know, and this guy that they got, he's supposed to be really, really good, and I'm sure he is good and all this kind of thing. But he hadn't called plays in four or five years, I don't guess. And, and he probably had an offense coordinator when he was the head coach. And, you get down in the fourth quarter and it's tight, and it's, uh, <laughs> who's going to spit out the bit? You know, he hadn't been in that situation in a while, and uh, uh, you know, I don't. I think it favors Clemson uh, that that happened, uh, but uh, who knows? And this guy may go in there and call a well of a game and do three times what Kiffin could do, and and, uh, and uh, they say he's just like him, and Coach Saban says he knows the offense in and out, but. It ain't necessarily what you know. It's just like shooting that free throw when there's one second left to win. The Clemson just lost North Carolina 
with five seconds left, missing the free throw on one and one, and the game tied. So, you know, shit, yeah. you know how that goes. You, you throw a brick up there sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. That's the truth. Uh, Coach, do you see this as you've seen Alabama in person? I know you've seen Clemson a lot this year. Uh, you think this will be a high scoring game like last year, or will this game be more in the twenties? No, I, I think it'll be. I, I think I don't even know what the over and under is for the ball game, but if they hit fifty five or sixty points, I think it'll be it'll be it'll be a good game in, in that range. Uh, I, you know, Clemson. I think they definitely. I believe what Clemson's going to do is run sort of the triple option off the read offense, for the, which is very tough. Uh, the the read play out of the out of the shotgun, and then go ahead the quarterback pull it or give it, and then have the receiver out there to throw it. It's a three way option, and, and that's a tough tough play to play because your defensive back can't commit to the run. He's got to play his deal, and everybody out there when that happens, and if he gets on the corner, then then that, that defense backs going to be wanting to come off that receiver. So I believe that's going to be a key play in the football game all night. But uh, And I'm sure uh, and don't have any knowledge. I haven't seen Clemson practice at all in, in two years. So uh, I don't know anything. But uh, I'm sure that they're going to run the quarterback. Uh, I mean, yeah, if he runs it 15 times, then, then I think Alabama's in trouble. But if Alabama gets a hold of it, it and makes things happen and Shakes him up a little bit. He doesn't like pressure coming straight at him. He, he, he don't don't a couple more interceptions this year than he has in the past. The uh, pressure on the side doesn't bother him as bad as if somebody coming right at his face, and that, that that's normal for any any athlete. Yeah, that over under. I checked it when you said that because you made me curious. It's fifty and a half. So they're thinking. Nothing Man. like last year. That's even lower than you. No, thought. Well, that's pretty close, and I yeah. hadn't even looked at it. I know that up here, the, the point spread, and I never have I believed in it a whole lot, but them suckers are pretty right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of the time. You know, they, they're more right than they are wrong because they got all their builders out in Las Vegas. But uh, anyway, they had uh, uh, they had it starting out at seven here, and somebody told me it went to six, and I had somebody told me it went to six back to seven and Alabama jumped all over that and somebody told me last night it went to six. But I don't I don't really know what it is. Have you got the it's update six, on that? Six and a half. Six and a half. Six and a half. Yeah. yeah. It hadn't moved much, you know. Uh it hadn't moved much at all and and you know that they're they're it, it's kinda scary uh uh what they know or how they know or how close <laughs> they get a lot of times. But uh yeah. That six and a half is, is, you know, they wasn't brave enough to put it at seven or six because they they still not real sure either. Right, Dan. Danny, tell me, tell me what you're doing on your farm. Well, I just got through feeding the cow. I done uh, uh, the cows, and I done uh, it's so muddy. I done knocked down the gate. I, I didn't have my tractor four wheel drive, and I ran over a fence, and then I, I was going to throw a bell of hay over the gate, and I hit the gate and, and knocked it down, and, and so. I've got a lot of repair work to do now, Wimp, because I'm a little, little, uh, not very careful this morning, and uh, <laughs> I'm trying to put it in four wheel drive. We're gonna get some snow, and we're trying to get ready for this. We, you know, you got to feed these animals and all this kind of thing. But I'm anxious to see this ball game. I know you are, and, and everybody in Alabama is. It ought to be a really, really good game. But uh, I'm anxious to see it. Hope, hope all y'all doing good down there. How's, how's Miss Sanders? She's doing fine. She's doing great. I yeah. appreciate your she, family. Okay. Yeah, she's still the boss. Yeah, she's still boss. Yeah, okay. I take orders. I, I take orders. I've always taken orders. She lets you do a ra- she lets you do a radio show, right? Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. I yeah. called them yesterday, coach, and they were they were lost, and somewhere I got lost in Birmingham. I don't know how you get lost in the town you live in. I said, well, just put your home address in your GPS, and they both said, oh, I didn't think about that. Would you have thought to do that, coach? But put the, put the address in your GPS. Well, you know what? I don't even have a GPS, so if I don't know where I'm going, I ain't going there. What yeah. kind of phone you got? What kind of phone is Daddy for? A flip phone? Oh, he's got a little old flip I, phone. I had a flip phone, and last night I I panicked. Uh, last night I panicked because I couldn't get it to come on. I couldn't charge it. I had to go to a little old Seven Eleven store up above me and let one of them Indian guys that knows all about things how to fix it. And he said it's broke. And, I called my son and said, I can't get, I got a, it's 10 30 last night, and I'm trying to fix my phone. And, and so basically, my son came over there, I, I finally got it charged just a little bit. My chart, my 
plug wasn't going any good. My boy came over and said, well, the problem is you got tobacco in the way you plug it up. It won't fit all for you. That's you. So That's you. I, I didn't know how I was going to call you. I didn't have your number except on the phone. I was going to call my sister yeah. or somebody in Birmingham yeah. and say, hey, get stuff that you're way up because you don't tell me on my last phone because I'm out. Oh, my well, God. We appreciate you, Danny. Thanks a lot. Thanks, hey, good, good luck to you all and, okay. and, uh, and hope the best team wins. That's the thing about it. I, I, I mean, I, I, I really do believe the best team is going to win the football game. So. We'll see who the best one is, and both of them strive to be the best. Both of them are good, so we'll see. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Coach. Thank you all.